Hello and welcome from 360 DigitMG. This is a video playlist to explain the life cycle of a data science project. We will see how a typical data science project is expected to be executed across different enterprises, both big and small. First, let us understand what data science means. Data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from structured and unstructured data. Now, what do we mean by structured and unstructured data? Structured data means relational databases, which could be Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, and so on. Unstructured data could be images, video, sound, or text, and they could be stored in non-relational relational databases such as Hadoop, Cassandra, MongoDB, etc. Data science is interrelated to data mining and big data. Now that we have that squared away, let us dive right in and understand what a data science project entails. To understand that, we first need to talk a little bit about the CRISP-DM framework, which is cross-industry standards and procedures for data mining. The current data science project lifecycle draws heavily from this framework. The CRISPM framework is shown in the picture is cyclical and iterative. It consists of the following steps. Business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. Now let us discuss about the first phase in the data science life cycle, that is business understanding. Business understanding, arguably one of the most critical phases of the data science life cycle. Albert Einstein once said, if I were given one hour to save the planet, I would spend 59 minutes defining the problem and one minute resolving it. That may be a bit extreme, but a well-defined problem often contains its own solution. And that solution is usually quite obvious and straightforward. By defining problems properly, you make them easier to solve, which means saving time, money, and resources. During this phase, the data scientists will have to talk to the stakeholders, domain experts, and get a clear understanding of the issue at hand. Most data science projects fail as the expectations are not clearly defined. So it is crucial that the business problem be defined in the clearest of terms. For example, the business user might say, I want to increase the revenue of my company. This is vague, not clear, and too general. So the data scientist needs to narrow the scope to something very specific like increasing the sales of a particular product, which in turn will increase the revenue of the company. The data scientist needs to understand the product in question, its historical performance if any, its competitors, what are the current sales, what is the expected increase, and by when do results need to be achieved. Needless to say, documenting the requirements is critical to this stage of success. Now let us see some of the best practices while defining the business problem. 1. Explore the current situation. Paint a picture in words by including the presenting problem, the impact it is having, the consequences of not solving the problem, and the emotions the problem is creating for those involved. 2. Explain. Once you have examined the and clearly explained the situation, draft a simple problem statement by filling in the blank. The problem that we are trying to solve is blank. Distill the problem into its simplest form possible. 3. Ask yourself, why is that a problem? If the answer is another problem, then congratulate yourself for moving from presenting problem to a deeper problem. Then ask yourself again, why is that a problem? Keep asking why until the solution presents itself. You could also use the famous Six Sigma 5Y technique to help define the problem. Now let us discuss about the next phase in the data science life cycle, data understanding. Data understanding. Now that we have a good understanding of the business problem that needs to be solved, the data scientist attempts to find out the available data. In the above example, the business problem is increase the sales of a particular product. The data scientist will identify the data sources, what data is available, where and how we can obtain it. It is recommended that the data scientist keep a catalog of all the data sources so that they could be easily reproduced when required. The data scientist will then typically proceed to acquire the datasets, interacting with various databases and file storage systems. 
Typically, this module requires that the data scientist have some experience with relational database systems such as Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and non-relational databases such as Hadoop, Cassandra, MongoDB, etc. And finally, it is advised that the data scientist have some knowledge about cloud-based systems such as Google's BigQuery, Amazon Redshift, and cloud-based file storages such as AWS S3, which is Simplified Storage Service. Some of the best practices during data collection. Detail the various sources and steps needed to extract the data. Confirm the availability of data, both in quantity and quality. Comprehensively understand your data before preparing it for downstream consumption. Define data governance, such as who owns the data, who has the access, the appropriate usage of the data, the ability to access and delete specific pieces of data on demand. Track data lineage so that the location of the data source is tracked and known during the further processing. Now let us discuss about the next phase in the data science life cycle, data preparation. Data preparation. Once we've narrowed down the business problem and understood what data is available to address it, we now begin to prepare the data for analysis. Most of the data in real world is highly noisy and comes from a lot of disparate sources. ML models are only as good as the data that is used to train them. After the data is collected, the integration, annotation, preparation, and processing of that data is critical. An essential characteristic of suitable training data is that it's provided in a way that is optimized for learning and generalization. Data preparation should start with a small, statistically valid sample and iteratively be improved with different pre data preparation strategies while continuously maintaining data integrity. This fails deals with how the dataset is prepared from relevant data sources by blending them together in a manner that makes the most sense. We also deal with missing data, handling null values, duplicate values, remove outliers, all of which form part of the data cleansing activities. Data preparation contains the following submodules. Exploratory data analysis, also known as EDA, and visualization, and feature engineering. Now, let us first talk about exploratory data analysis and visualization. EDA is not listed as one of the first BM phases, but over a period of several years, this has become a crucial part of the data science lifecycle. It involves identifying correlations and relationships between variables using visual as well as statistical techniques. For example, when dealing with a regression model, you need to check for highly correlated variables, account for homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity, etc. A key aspect to understanding your data is identify patterns. These patterns are not often evident when you are only looking at data in tables. The correct visualization tool can help you quickly gain a deeper understanding of your data. Before creating any chart or graph, you must decide what you want to show. For example, charts can convey information such as KPIs, relationships, comparisons, distributions, or compositions. Now let us discuss about the sub-module in data preparation, feature engineering. Feature engineering. This sub-module is not listed as part of the TRISP DM framework, but is widely recognized as an integral part of the data science lifecycle. Every unique attribute of the data is considered a feature. For example, when designing a solution for a problem of predicting customer churn, you start with the customer data that has been collected over time. The customer data captures features also known as attributes, such as customer location, age, income level, and recent purchases. Feature engineering is a process to select and transform variables when creating a predictive model that uses machine learning or statistical modeling. Feature engineering typically includes feature creation, feature transformation, feature extraction, and feature selection. Now let us understand what each of them mean. Feature creation identifies the features in the dataset and that are relevant to the problem at hand. Feature transformation manages replacing missing features or features that are not valid. Some of the techniques include forming Cartesian products of features, non-linear transformations such as binning numerical variables into categories, and creating domain-specific features. Feature extraction is the process of creating new features from existing features typically with the goal of reducing the dimensionality of the features. Feature selection is the filtering of irrelevant 
or redundant features from your dataset. This is usually done by observing variance or correlation thresholds to determine which features to remove. Some of the best practices for feature engineering. Use domain experts to help evaluate the feasibility and importance of features. Remove redundant and irrelevant features to reduce the noise in the data and reduce correlations. Start with the features that generalize across contexts. Iterate as you build your model, new features, feature combinations, and new tuning objectives. Now let us discuss the next phase in the data science life cycle, model development. Model development. This is the core of a data science life cycle. When most people think about data science, they think algorithms, testing out various strategies, tools, and techniques, which form the basis of this phase. In this phase, you select a machine learning algorithm that is appropriate for your problem and then train your ML model. As part of that training, you provide the algorithm with the training data to learn and form the set the model parameters to optimize the training process. Typically, a training algorithm computes several metrics, such as training error and prediction accuracy. These metrics help determine whether the model is learning well and will generalize well for making predictions on unseen data. Metrics reported by the algorithm depend on the business problem and on the ML technique that you use. For example, a classification algorithm can be measured by a confusion matrix that captures true and false positives and true or false negatives, while a regression algorithm can be measured by root mean square error, RMSE. Settings can be tuned to control the behavior of ML algorithm and the resulting model architecture are referred to as hyperparameters. The number and type of hyperparameters in ML algorithms are specific to each model. Some examples of commonly used hyperparameters are learning rate, number of epochs, hidden layers, hidden units, and activation functions. Hyperparameter tuning or optimization is the process of choosing the best model architecture. Best practices for model development. Generate a testing plan before you train your model. Have a clear understanding of the type of algorithm that you want to train. Make sure you, the training data is representative of your business problem. Use managed services for your training deployments. Apply incremental training or transfer learning strategies. Stop training jobs early when the results as measured by the objective are not improving significantly to avoid overfitting and reduce cost. Closely monitor your training metrics because model performance may degrade over time. Now let us discuss about the next phase in the data science life cycle, model evaluation. Model evaluation. This is the penultimate step of the data science life cycle. After the model has been trained, evaluate it to determine if its performance and accuracy will enable you to achieve your business goals. You might want to generate multiple models using different methods and evaluate the effectiveness of each model. For example, you could apply different business rules for each model and then apply various measures to determine model sustainability. You might also evaluate whether your model needs to be more sensitive than specific or more specific than sensitive. For multi-class models, evaluate error rates for each class separately. You can evaluate your model using historical data which is also called offline evaluation, or live data, which is called online evaluation. In offline evaluation, the trained model is evaluated with a portion of the data set that has been set aside as a holdout set. This holdout data is never used for model training or validation. It is only used to evaluate errors in the final model. The holdout data annotations need to have high accuracy for the evaluation to make sense. Allocate additional resources to verify the accuracy of the holdout data. Now let's look at some of the best practices for evaluating a model. Have a clear understanding of how you measure success. Evaluate the model metrics against business expectations for the project. Plan and execute model deployment. The final step in the data science lifecycle, model deployment and monitoring. Model deployment and monitoring. This is the final step of the data science lifecycle. After a model is trained, tuned, and tested, you can deploy the model into production and make inferences against the model. There are a multitude of ways in which you could deploy your model into production, and it could be done on the cloud, like AWS, 
Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, etc., or on-prem hardware. Since the model is already trained, you may not need to have a heavy instance for inference on new or unseen data to make predictions. This may not be true for models that need to be continuously retrained like real-time streaming data. Always consider building feature data processing and feature engineering pipelines with a suite of feature transformers readily available in the Spark ML and scikit-learn framework containers and deploy these as part of the inference pipelines to reuse data processing code. This will simplify management of your ML processes. After deployment, continuously monitor the models. After an ML model is deployed into production, the real-world data might start to differ from the data that was used to train the model, leading to deviations in model quality and eventually less accurate models. Build a model monitor that detects deviations such as data drift, can degrade model performance over time, and alerts you to take remedial actions. Best practices while deploying models into production. Monitor model performance in production and compare to business expectation. Monitor differences between model performance during training and in production. When changes in model performance are detected, retrain the model. For example, sales expectations and subsequent predictions may change due to new competition. So that completes our walkthrough of the data science lifecycle. Hope you enjoyed this video playlist. See you in the next one. Thank you.